Welcome to the DIY tin earring video. Um, and welcome to my studio. It's a crowded mess of stuff, but that's kind of how I like stuff. I like to have lots of things in my visual field. So I will not do that for this video, but I will um, show you how to make earrings from this kit you've just purchased. And if you haven't purchased the kit, that's cool too. You can use this video um, with any of the tin that you might find out in the world. I recommend thrift stores. It's a great place to find them. So I will flip over to the actual DIY part. I'll show you what tools you might need. I've tried to include everything I can in the kit. There's a few things that um, you'll probably have in the house that will make things easier for you. But let's get started. All right, let's get started. So you have your little pack of tin and findings. And this one is in reds with these rectangle shaped um, kits. I've got them in warms, cools, and neutrals because um, it just made more sense for me to do it that way. So this guy's in red. Let's open it up and um, show you what's in it, what you've got to work with here. Get all these little pieces out. And set that aside. All right, so there's all your cool tin. You've got some bigger pieces and some smaller pieces. Um, these will cut with regular household scissors. So if you have like a pair of Fiskars or something like that, we can cut up all kinds of little pieces of tin. So, and in this little packet, we have the other findings and your wires. And in here are your little um, jump rings. This is the fine steel wool. And here are 10 pair of earrings in this small kidney wire um, design and then a slightly different um, French hook. And I have five pair of each of these in the kit. Oh, and also this um, nail, which we will use either to punch holes or maybe to make some line work in the various um, pieces of tin. So real quick, let's go through some things that you probably have around the house that might be useful. They're not 100% necessary, but they might be useful. A Sharpie or a marking pen or pencil, we'll use this to indicate where we're going to punch holes in the tin in order to connect pieces to each other. This is a tiny little hammer that I have, but any hammer will work. Uh, you'll use that with your nail if you don't have a hole punch. That will allow you to punch holes in the tin. A pair of scissors, household shears, nothing fancy, fiskers. Um, and these are jeweler's pliers, but any like needle nose pliers you have around the house could be really useful. Piece of scrap wood, and I'm going to try to include a little fine sandpaper um, sponge for you as well, but if you don't, I mean, but if um, you have a piece of sandpaper, that would be great too. All right, so we have all this fun tin. I'm gonna just go through and pick out a couple pieces that appeal to me um, and set the rest aside. I think I'll just stick with these two. Let's just use these two for now. It'll be real simple. All right, so this tin is all rough cut for you. Um, and you will need a pair of scissors. That's one thing you'll definitely need and I couldn't fit in my little package. Um, but you can cut the tin very much like paper. It's just, it's gonna take a little bit more hand strength. Um, I'm going to cut, I'm gonna use this red line down the center. I like that. So I'm gonna um, make a narrower piece, uh, a rectangle to work from. So you can see I'm just um, putting the 
tin towards the back of my scissors and just cutting like you would normally. Um, keeping the scissor, uh, keeping the tin in the back part of the scissors makes it a little bit easier. You have more strength there in that part of the scissor. Um, but that's really it. You're just cutting little pieces. I'm gonna cut these kind of in half. You can be exacting if you want and measure things. I'm not a great measurer. I don't do a lot of that. I just kind of guesstimate. Um, so I've got two little rectangles there. And then I'm gonna pair this. I'm gonna cut this rectangle in half. and pair these together like this to make my earrings. Okay, I have these pieces of tin and in your kit you have a little piece of um, steel wool. I double it over, I kind of make it um, a little bit thicker and it makes it a little bit more rigid too. And so the first part after you've got your pieces cut and you know how you want them arranged, you want to um, smooth and soften the edges of the tin. So I'm really just rubbing each edge. And if you can get the corners a little bit, that's even better because these corners can be a little um, pokey. Um, so I'm rub rubbing each edge of the tin and each corner as much as possible with the steel wool. It will um, make the tin edge much um, smoother and softer and it will make the pointy edges a little bit less pointy. And so you want to do that on every edge of um, the pieces, all the pieces that you're going to use. All right, so I have softened all my edges and the next thing we need to do is indicate where we're going to need holes for our jump rings. So we're going to need a hole on the top of this piece and the bottom of this piece for the jump ring, both sides. And then we're going to need a hole at the top for our ear wire. Okay, so I have these um, pliers, hole pliers, hole punches. They make a tiny, um, small hole and they work exactly like a plier. And I don't expect that you'll have these, but I show them to you because if you are um, planning to make more things in the world, I think they're a great tool. I use them on paper and, and you can see it's a teeny tiny little hole. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, there you go. Um, I use them on all sorts of things. They're not very expensive. They're like $15 or so. Just, I point them out to you because they are a cool um, tool to have in your tool chest. Um, but you don't need to have those. You can just find a piece of scrap wood and the nail that I, sent, that I put in the kit. So this is a pretty rigid nail, which is, you can use any nail but I just wanted to make sure you had one that was pretty sturdy um, and a little hammer I've got a little one but a regular you know big size hammer will work too and you want to put the point of your nail where you're where you've indicated for your hole and you want to you want to whack it you really want to make a hole but not obviously so big um, and so I have a hole in that direction but the trick I use is that once I've uh, punched it from one direction, I turn the tin over and I punch it kind of back because it shapes, it, it wants to punch the tin, it divots the tin a little bit and so if you turn it over it kind of undivots it so it's flat again. Um, this hole is pretty good, it looks like it's the right size and it shouldn't take much more. If you're not happy with the size, if it doesn't seem quite big enough, then, then you just repeat. You just go a little deeper with your nail and it will make the hole a little bit bigger. And that's all that you need to do for hole making. So I've gone through and punched all these holes. 
One thing I didn't mention is that you really want to get fairly close to the edge of your piece because your the jump rings in the kit aren't super big and you need to have the hole close to the edge. So that's just something you want to pay attention to. You don't want your hole way down here, you want it up towards the edge. Um, but once you've got those um, punched, then you get out your little packet of um, jump rings. And these are just, it's just a little bit of paper I've put together, like a little envelope to kind of make it easier to keep them in one place. I like to use a nail actually to kind of pull on a few because you know, you don't really need a thousand of them. These are fairly small jump rings. You can open and close them with your fingers. It's hard, kind of hard to show you that here in the video. When you open a jump ring, you want to, I'm even having a hard time with it. So I'm gonna use pliers and I suggest you do too. Hold the jump ring in one side and then you can twist it open. So a jump ring, you don't wanna pull it apart you want to twist it open and closed um, and so that's what I'm doing here and so once it's open then you just need to thread your pieces onto the ring the rule is you either want the pieces face to face or back to back in this case I've got the back and so I want to make sure that this back matches it that way they will um, open up correctly and be facing the right direction in the end. So those are back to back, and then I need to close up the jump ring. Again, I'm just twisting it. Um, with tin, it is pretty thin, so uh, sometimes I go back in and just make sure it is, that the jump ring is closed tightly, because the tin can slip off of jump rings if you're not careful. And that's it, They're, those two are connected. Okay, great. So these are both connected. I've put the jump rings through both of them. And I'm going to use these little kidney wires to finish up the process. So kidney wires have a little hook that allows them to stay closed and snug on your ear so that they don't fall off. Sometimes, you know, earrings can do that. So I like these connectors because of that. You just push it open and um, thread it through the back of your earring wind it over to the little notch here see that let it hang on that notch and then some people leave that notch open and call it good but I like to and they're designed to be um, closed up and again this is something you can do with your hands it takes a little bit of um, hand strength just squeezing it closed gotta get the right angle though there you go so you can squeeze it closed so that it doesn't come off as easily. The tin is thin, so you kind of really have to get it closed. This is where a tool like a needle nose pliers can come in handy because you can just go in at the corner, I mean, at there, at the connector, and then just at the, connect, at the narrow point and push it together. Um, and so You can see that it's on there and it's not going to slip off, which is really great. Uh, and then I like to just close it up and I tend to, again, if I have pliers, I will, I come in here and I kind of just lengthen out this wire a little bit. I think it has a little bit better dimension if you do that. But then that's it. That's a finished earring. You've done the whole thing. And so, so that's the most straightforward way to use this kit you can just cut up little pieces into tr smaller rectangles and make a variety of earrings using all the various patterns that are available for you. Some of the tin is also not patterned, it's just a single color in here. I've included that, some of that in each kit. And so one of the things I wanted to show you that I like to do with that is take this nail, again using the same tool and a straight edge I'm just going to use a template but you have a if you have a ruler or you know anything that's ruler like that you can 
draw a line against, then that's what you can use. I like to use this nail. I'm literally like um, using the nail as an etching tool. So I'm just etching random straight lines in this yellow tin to give it a bit more of an interesting pattern. Um, and then from there, I'll cut it up. So you can see now it has these, this line work, which is really interesting because it, the light play on it is really fun. You can, when it moves, it'll shimmer a little bit. Another way you can play around with the pieces in the kit is to use a piece of sandpaper. I've got a little sanding sponge here. It's actually just a nail file. Um, but this paint can be sanded to kind of change the character of it. It will flatten out, will remove any sheen that you might have on the finish. I'm going to do it on this longer piece. And it also just roughens it up. You can make it look a little bit more rustic. Um, I'm not sure this was the best piece to try, but let's see if you can see, you know, you can see that it's just a little bit more roughed up and a little bit less orange, a little, a little shiny, less shiny. And so that is another thing that you can do on any of these pieces of tin. Um, just to give your own spin to the materials that are in your kit. Same thing. You can see where this tin had some raised edges. And so sanding those reveals the silvery metal underneath and also um, makes a more of a matte finish on the remaining painted parts. So that's it. It doesn't really take a whole lot. You don't really need special tools. I hope that you got everything you need from the video. Uh, if you haven't, please get in touch with me either through my website at adaptivereuser.com or on Instagram at Christine Terrell. I would love to answer any questions that I could and would love to know or, and see what you've made. So for sure, tag me there on Instagram and get in touch if you have any other questions. Thanks.